Hey everybody, boys, that's BK Forrest. Welcome to our weekly technicals for SEP 3 to SEP 7 2018 for the majors, for Euro dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar. The theme this week is trade war. What's it absolutely good for? Because that's really the dominant factor in FX trade as we closed out the week. I mean, it's going to be a very chock full week of economic data, and yet I think none of the economic data is going to have much of an impact. We have overriding headlines on the trade front. We certainly have this sort of bilateral um, trade war going on between U.S. and Europe and U.S. and Canada. And it's going to be very interesting to see if Trump backs off his hardline negotiation or whether he decides to really press his luck, at which point I think you're going to see even more risk off flows and potentially a lot more damage uh, to the majors as we go forward. For now, we still stay within the longer term levels of 15, 17 on the euro, although we really backed off the euro. I'm going to show you on the charts um, just how much of a reversal candle we have on the euro side. The yen continues to be in this very calm 110, 112 level, but this week could be very interesting because we have the economic data on the one front, we have the political data on the other front, and um, you know, while it's been very low volatility trade, we could explode to the downside if things go wrong. Um, I find it difficult to see us exploding to the upside unless everything goes right and the economic data proves to be better than expected, at which point we can really breach the 112, and that could be a very positive development for dollar yen. And then cable, of course, is this own Brexit story. Still, it's really mind-boggling because it appears that, that you know, we had very positive news on Brexit middle of the week with Barnier basically saying they're willing to give the UK a special deal. Uh, to stay in the union or to, st to stay within the trade union, uh, to stay outside of the EU, if they would just drop the Irish issue. I mean, there is no way EU is going to allow UK to put a border in Ireland and um, create a Brexit issue. So it's going to be fascinating to see um, whether this one dumb little political issue is going to sabotage the whole thing. The jury is still out. I find it very difficult to, to kind of um, put a strong uh, directional view on the pound. We'll take a look at it. There's also a little bit of um, UK data that's going to flow through the, uh, the week, uh, important UK data. We'll see if, uh, if we're starting to have any further negative impact off of this recommendation from Brexit. But um, ultimately, it's really headline driven. That's the key thing. This week is very much a headline driven week, so very hard to make concerted uh, directional bets unless you're watching the news very carefully. Let's take a look at the calendar here, just see what's going on. So the calendar, first of all, we have Monday is, a, is an off day in North America. It will be a hat. It'll be a very, very quiet start to the week. But then Tuesday, everything really does start to begin build up. And we do have a lot of economic data on the calendar, although its exact impact on trade, I think, is going to be very marginal. So we have the PMI data from UK. We have the PMI data out of Europe. We have the ISM, both manufacturing and services, out of um, U.S. As a matter of fact, I actually want to take a look. So let's just take a look at this. I, I pulled up for you. Here's the U.S. data for the month of um, August. And this is interesting to me because while everybody is rah, rah, shish, boom, ba, rooting the fact that U.S. economy is doing well, what you see here early, and I think unmistakably, is actually signs of a slowdown. And... Um, if the signs of the slowdown are further aggravated by a second month in a row of lower than month prior numbers, you have to really wonder if we hit peak growth in the U.S. economy and if the Fed actually is completely overplaying its hand. This to me is, is the much more interesting story on the U.S. side here is <clears throat> if we miss, um, does that start to signal a much deeper slowdown than anybody anticipates um, that we actually hit peak growth in the U.S.? Aside from that, what else we have here? Um, yeah, I mean, and we, we end up obviously with the non-farm payrolls. And again, the same story. It's really not jobs. It's going to be a wages that really matters. And wages really, you know, there's all these anecdotal stories about how the U.S. economy is full employment. How there's just absolutely no uh, workers available, blah, blah, blah. And yet wages are completely stagnant in, in any real sense of the word. I don't think you're going to see that very different. If, if we do see a five, a 0.5% number on wages, that's a completely different story. It'll be super bullish dollar yen. But until and unless we see that, I think it's doubtful. Anyways, let's look at the charts here because I think this is the interesting point here. This is the week. I'm going to start with the weekly because I found this very fascinating. 
look at the just blowout candle, the um, um, uh, the complete reversal candle here on the weekly in the euro. Remember, we talked about the fact that 17, 1750 was going to be a hard, hard, hard area to uh, to break through in Europe. Well, did, not only did it turn out to be a hard area to break through, but it turned out to be just a massive cement ceiling. So big reversal. Obviously, Europe has its own problems. Obviously, Italy becomes a nagging issue for the European Union at this point. The, I think, bigger issue, uh, because Italy will always be a drama, but never really um, um, a, a serious port of contention. I just don't think the Italians are going to pull out of the European zone anytime soon. But the more dangerous point, I think, will be any kind of a threat by the U.S. on um, car tariffs uh, to the U.S. Um, to the European industry, because that really, really could just destroy growth in Europe much more than anything else. So I think you have to watch Euro. Euro has really had a big reversal. Uh, risk offflows are starting to just uh, predominate all across. We'll take a look at the crosses. You'll see how how evident it's been in the Euro Swiss cross, which has just really come down to fresh multi-month lows. But the weekly just shows a big reversal candle, right? A shooting star, uh, serious uh, you know s serious possibility here of further decline. Support um, 15 is is where I have support here. If we look at it, at the dailies, I think that's that's a better look for for where the support is. So here's the support. Support. We're still ironically enough on the dailies above the 20, above the 500. So it still looks relatively healthy uh, from the long side because support is pretty much right here. If we hold 1550, um, we have a chance to probably come climb back up. How much really remains to be seen? The 1700 looks like a pretty serious resist level for the time being. But uh, the point being is that um, only at this level is the euro going to become an interesting buy point because um, I think it has, still has more room to the downside and a test possibly of the 1500, 1520 as we go forward as risk offloads is still a big problem uh, in the eurozone. Same story um, in cable. Cable obviously had this big burst on the positive Brexit news. What I think will be very telling, and we'll be watching this very carefully, if we take out the lows of this candle, so this is what, 2850, if 2850 is just taken out, that is such a brutally, brutally negative technical signal. And it will sh suggest that we could go right back towards testing the, the lows underneath the 27s to sort of a double bottom test. On the other hand, um, if we get much more positive murmurings out of Brussels this week um, and come back again and actually close, what we really need to do is we need a daily close above 30, ideally above 3050, to confirm this breakout and confirm that we now have a positive trend in cable. Cable is a Brexit story. It's going to ignore all the noise of the news unless it's sort of the news confirms the uh, the other negative story. In other words, if we have negative Brexit news and negative um, economic news, we're just going to start to drift all the way back down. So to me, the interesting thing in cable right now is not where it stands, but where it can go. Uh, at 3050, it really signals a much more durable upside breakout. And at 2850, it's going to break the hearts of every, um, it basically signals a complete fake out. It's going to break the hearts of every bull that's out there. Um, and the yen, obviously, uh, looks modestly positive, right? I mean, we, they bought the bottom. They continue buying the bottom underneath this 1050 level. But, you know, what, what worries me about the yen is that, is that yeah, you basically, you're, you're coming to a point of truth here, this point of squeeze. We have a series of lower highs and a series of higher lows. And generally, when you have this type of a technical formation, you know, something has got to give. We either break to the upside or we break to the downside. Um, so this week is probably going to be a good test of that um, thesis. We're going to have to see how the U.S. economy goes. I think the, the whole point is, I think, that if, if the U.S. economy does not impress, there's a serious danger here, first of all, that we can take out the 1050. Um, and then the much more important test level of, of 110. So... Um, I think that the danger lies to the downside right now, but I may be just talking my book. I'm gonna, I'm obviously going to watch the price action. For now, if you're just looking at the price action, the Friday's close was relatively bullish, actually. Um, and if we have another day, day of positive price action, uh, maybe it, uh, Monday is, is obviously a non-event non day. Tuesday will be the day we'll have to watch and see how well it trades out. If, if Tuesday we hold above these lows of the 1070, maybe we have a reasonable chance here to climb towards the 1200. But if we start to drift back down, especially if we take out the uh, if we take out the 1050s, um, the whole tenor of dollar yen turns negative, and I think the dollar trade 
um, goes to the downside for a test of the one tens. So that's how the week shapes up. It's very much headline driven. Be aware, watch the news because I think the uh, price action could change on a dime this week, depending on how we go, uh, both on the trade front and the economic front. Wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Boris Lonsberg, over and out.